Great relationships don't just happen. They're designed. Why leave love to chance when you can make strategic decisions in your relationship just like you do in your career? The days of settling for mediocre are over. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. Join us as we explore the decisions and choices that make relationships work no matter what life throws your way. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Welcome to Project Relationship. Hi, and welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. And today we're going to talk about what happens when you're in a relationship where you have prioritized growth over comfort, you're in a project relationship style relationship, and your partner is experiencing growth. And you're maybe not. Maybe you're feeling a little stuck. Maybe you're paused. And that can be some discomfort. Yeah, big time discomfort. And so we are currently in one of those moments, a little bit at least. A little bit. And it's a good time to talk about it when it's fresh and raw. Because part of what I want this podcast to be about is the reality of relating is that it's always a work in progress. I don't have everything perfect. It's not a fixed thing. It's not. There is no one right way. There's no secret code that once unlocked, you'll never have to do relationship work again. (laughs) So I want to show up here transparently and, and share what our process looks like. Yeah. It's not the only way to do things. And in fact, it can really only be our way of doing things. Well, and the, the core of this particular thing, or at least a big piece of it, is that it isn't our way. It's each of our individual ways. Because when you are experiencing you know, growth and development, and I'm over here, for example, you know, not having whatever experiences I'm having, I have to deal with that. Yeah. And I can ask you for help, but I'm the one who's going to have to deal with it. So we get to a very important word really quickly then, differentiation. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure if, if you've been a person doing relationship work, you've probably come across this word already. But if you haven't, differentiation really means can I, can I detect, can I really feel the difference between me and my partner? Am I able to fully understand that I am an individual while also being in my partnership, in my couplehood, or in my relationship structure? A lot of us were taught through modeling by our parents or whoever was raising us to overlap almost completely. And I I see that in clients a lot. I see people who have overlapped their stories almost 100% and they lose track Mm -hmm. of, and I say they, but I might as well say me. I have lost track of myself, my capital S self, my unique spark, my individual self. Me too. In relating. Yep. It has has happened. And I just had an experience last night that reminded me that this is a, it's a thing that can happen. Right. Even now we're conscious, we're trying to be as intentional as we can about everything. We have agreements, we have discussions all the time. And um, it's still possible for, well, I still run across the places where I haven't differentiated in all the ways that I would like to Yeah. from you. And so when you use the word differentiation, are you thinking about the way it feels inside of you to, to feel your, your individual self? Or are you thinking of it sort of I find some people intellectualize about it. I have in the past. I've intellectualized about it. And I think, yeah, I know the difference between me and my partner. I know that's their stuff and this is my stuff. But then in my feelings, in my in my inside, Uh, in my emotional response. Okay. There I find myself getting all hung up and caught up on am I am I getting hurt because this person like, am I wait, is that their feeling or my feeling? Am I yeah. Enmeshment. And that's a good Enmeshment. question. And I, my experience, my, my most recent experience was a sort of, yeah, I think the second one I had in retrospect, looking at how I had felt and how I had behaved, I could see that I, I wasn't holding myself up on my own. Yeah. The way I wanted to. Right. And that is not uncommon. I think we 
don't we all find ourselves at times unable to really hold up what we've agreed to? Well, sure. Right. I mean, I certainly do. We are not perfect. So why don't you talk about what's going on right now for you? Okay. So um, part of this is your story and part of it is mine, but it sounds like you're saying it's oh, okay for sure. me to tell yeah, your story. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so you are at the beginning of a new relationship. You've been dating and... Uh, and so we have had the opportunity to talk about what that means for our relationship, that this isn't just, this looks like it's moving beyond casual into a more significant yeah. relationship with her. And um, like I have an all kinds of yes all through me. So you can feel your full bodied yes, Absolutely. which is important to notice because we've been checking in a lot about that. And that's one of the things that's helped me understand where we are. Mm -hmm as I develop feelings for someone else, where are we? And knowing what a full body yes is and what no feels like Which you in your and I, body. You and I were just working on this with me. That's Thank you helpful. very much. Is knowing in my body, what does no feel like? What does yes feel like? Because I have trained myself to ignore those feelings. So what does no feel like for you? It's a bit of a tangent, but I think it's- There important. are a couple no's. I have one that runs across- my like my belt right underneath my belt yeah. there's a, a a tightening electric feeling across my belt roiling a little bit mm -hmm. and then there's one that happens behind my face yeah um um prickly oh that's interesting um prickly that's a great way to describe uh, so when you're trying to figure out what your, the sensations of your yes or no are um turning to those sensations means you need words so mm -hmm. i like to remind people like think is there a heat or weight or vibration? Is there a texture or color coming up? Something like that. It helps us really understand the sensation better. She, and that lets us tip into it like it does. faster rather than wait for it to totally knock us on our butts. Yep. Yeah. And, and as part of this tangent, shame's an easy one for me because it's like stepping into an oven. Yeah. All of a sudden I'm 500 <laughs> degrees. But no is actually more, much more subtle. Yeah. Um, and so it's been useful being spending some time identifying that so that I can notice that, yeah, I'm not having a no here. But what I found last night, so last night you were you went out. Yep. And you were you were out for I don't know. Yeah, like ten hours. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I was alone. And see this this has nothing to do with what you were doing during that time. Well, it was Schrodinger's date until I got home. You don't I even didn't know, know what, what was happening. <laughs> nope. Um, you you could have been at class. You could right. have I mean who could say? Because the same kinds of things have happened when you It's traveled. Schrodinger's date for our audience. Who could say what That's happened? Who could say? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I found myself um Struggling is maybe too strong a word, but aware of the effort I had to put in to hold myself to the standard I hold myself to when you're here. Okay. Say that again differently because so, that's yeah. really interesting. Um, so what did I say? So I had to expend effort. I had to think about what I was doing to make sure that I was doing the kinds of things that make me the person I want to be when you can see me. So you use me. So you noticed, in other words, that you use me that, yeah. or my my gaze. You use my gaze mm -hmm. to hold yourself to a standard. Yeah. But it's not my standard. It is my standard. It's actually, so it's how you want me to see you, mm -hmm. which is interesting because you don't actually get to decide how I see no, you. No, I don't. But even how, if you're doing how I imagine right. you see me, this is all about me. There is like <laughs> hardly any you in this at all, as it turns out. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty normal, Hamilton. I mean, it's not, <laughs> come on. <laughs> That's true. Let's get back to talking about me now. <laughs> I think that was a huge find. I think so, so too. when our partners are experiencing growth and change, and in particular, when they're experiencing like the joys of a new relationship, sure, but also like the growth of a business, the, the way it feels when you're having success. Or I also, I had a great guest lecture at my alma mater this week. Um, I had a, I had closed a great sales call um, last week. Like things have been really good yeah. um, thing, and things have been moving really fast in my life. Whereas you are in a more um, tending the field yes. way place yeah. in your life you're yeah. you're very you know in that that mode of like 
tending to things. So when we're in those different modes, wow, it can be so, so hard to remember that it's not a reflection. Like my success, my growth isn't, it doesn't need to be a direct reflection of you or our relationship or anything. It's really letting yeah. ourselves be individuals. Right. And we value interdependence a lot. So I don't want to, I don't want to overstate the case because I also think it's important to be connected. And I don't find that as a, uh, I don't find that uh, conflicts at all. That me being an individual, <clears throat> it lets me know how I can show up in the interdependence that we have. Make sure that I'm doing it according to my own wants and needs and commitments and uh, versus watching you trying to figure out what you want and doing that. Oh, because that's so childlike, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. I, I'm going to stay away from the phrase childish, but childlike. Yep. So we have seven kids when they were small, especially so under say eight years old, seven, eight years old, a child will take an action even as, or maybe especially an action that they're not sure is, is good. Yep. Yep. And they will absolutely turn toward their caregiver and watch yeah. for their caregiver's reaction. They'll also do it if they fall down, they fall down. Yep. And before they recognize what exactly the sensation is and whether it's good or bad, they don't classify it until they look at their caregiver's face and they register our emotion. That's part of their development, part yep. of their natural development. And so there's a childlike move yep. there where you look to me and look to my reaction to determine your own self-worth. Is that the right word for it? Or goodness? Um, I'm not sure what word you would the use. The accuracy of my judgment Oh, is how I feel it. So, so you're trying to judge whether what you're doing is right or wrong, yeah. in other words? Mm -hmm. And we... so. So do you find that it's a challenge to tell whether actions that you're taking are right or wrong? Or do you not, or do you just struggle to trust that your judgment is right? Not, that's not just, that's, that's big. Um, I struggle to trust my judgment. I, yeah, so you oh, have oh, a judgment, asking, so you'll make like yeah, a Do right I struggle wrong, to like... judge or struggle to trust the judgment? Most of the time I'm struggling to trust my judgment. Okay. I don't. Think you this know is those long thing. pauses in conversations? Yeah. Trying to convince myself that my judgment is accurate. Mm. Because so often I've had conversations where I say, I, I believe this. I have thought about it and felt about it. And I believe this. And then I, I expose that to someone else. And they talk to me. And it's mostly you. And they say, well, this is, here's what I think. I say, well, that sounds a lot, a lot better to me. And I agree with that now. You and, are malleable. And I'm exactly. trying, and, and I know I'm and malleable. And I have to be careful about and I'm, that. And I'm trying to be careful. I'm trying to, like, okay, I'm going to present something with all of its rationale so that if you come back, I don't just knee-jerk accept yours. Yeah. But I've got some structure to mine. And I'm, so, yeah, yeah that's, that's a big deal. Just being able to, to trust yourself might be one of the big, um, the big moves of being differentiated and being able to be in the space of experiencing your partner as wholly separate while also being connected to them. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah. just being able to trust this is me. This is the decision I've made. This is how I feel about it. Um, because then there are these days. So yesterday you were alone. I was, I was out and I was having a great time. It was nice. I checked in like once just to say, Hey, I'm having a good time. Everything's fine. Um, but you were on your own, left to your own devices, it sounds like you could have dug yourself a hole of yeah. self-pity or... Um, martyrdom. 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 That's my move. I could have spent the whole time just working, doing, you know, working in my job or cleaning the house or going outside and doing jobs and I could have that that would and have, have been seen you my, do that before. That's my go to move when I'm not feeling um settled in myself. So the first time I ever saw you do that, we were in our early phases of dating and um we were in a, a polyamorous relationship then too and your wife had gone away for a weekend and you spent every minute of that weekend doing jobs around yeah. the house, trying to complete, trying to make things right, trying to make things perfect. 
And I watched sort of in awe because I didn't, I had not seen you like that. It was actually more active than I'd seen you mm. at other times. Mm -hmm. You, you were lost in it. You, you were barely even speaking. You were so lost in that, that move. Does it feel settled in you or does it feel what happens? Cause I've also seen it when I go away to Pacifica, the kids will report to me. Yep. I've gone, you know, been away for a week in California and, and kids are like, Oh yeah, he's got his head down. He's, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> trudging through the fields. And I, I think that that has been me avoiding um, taking responsibility for making my own decisions. Even though every single one of those was my own decision, I pass it off on the work. No, no, I was working. And that has this sort of moral authority that means no one can question me. And that's what I hid behind. And as I have grown myself, I've worked on... Uh, I have worked on shifting that so that I do what I want to do and make sure that I take care of myself. So let's come back around to the start again and say, so when, when we're at different spots in our, in our growth process, in our, our individuation journey or whatever, because mm -hmm. we're doing this together separately, Yep. right? That's just how that works. I mean, the words individuation. Individuation implies that there's something very individual about it. Yeah. However, it, at least the way I am acting in this this lifetime is that is a connecting experience. I want my relationships to be how I functionally individuate. But one of the choices that you make, what I'm hearing is that you martyr yourself. You you have moved into that like work mode when I am having growth and happiness and success. Do you think that that's got anything to do with envy over where I'm at? That's a, that's a deep question. I think there's, we don't have time to unpack all of that. <laughs> um, that's a good question and I'll have to think about that. Okay, I maybe hadn't we'll, looked at it from that direction. Let's dive into envy in an upcoming episode yeah, then. Yeah, let's do that. Because um, I want to know, we've spent a lot of time talking about me and my side of this. You are experiencing excitement. Stuff is and good. <laughs> Stuff is excitement good. and development and movement in your your my in business, your business is growing and, beautifully and having a great time. Yeah, how's that going for you? Well, it's awesome. Um, I am I am high on NRE, which is means new relationship energy. So I'm I'm seeing someone who I who I really care about, and I'm excited about that. But also, um. Yeah, my my business is is growing steadily and in a direction specifically that I want it to. Like mm -hmm. it is growing in a way that is healthy for me and in a way that I feel totally excited to meet with my clients day to day because because I know I I know how to help them. And that just that that's like electrical energy for me. I know how to assist them in their journey. So yeah, stuff is really good. I'm also, you know, I had a really busy semester. Mm -hmm. So I kind of didn't notice how much good stuff had stacked up in the first six months of the year. A lot of stuff had yeah, stacked up and really I'm busy. pausing yeah. now to notice it. And good. I'm feeling good, but under all that good, there is a little bit of guilt. I wouldn't say it's shame. I would say it's guilt. Um, because it, I'm not getting shame signals. My shame is these little, these little lightning bolts behind here, and I'm behind your ears, behind my ears, and I um, not getting that sensation, but I do feel slightly guilty. Like, and here's how it comes out, and this, this doesn't make any sense. I feel like I should do whatever I can to make sure that you are also in this same phase that I'm in. So, oh, you should also do all these things. But what if you don't want to? What, like, that is, right. and so I don't mean like, oh, you've been asking me specifically to guide you or help you along these ways. Or No, you didn't ask me for that. We are doing some projects together. We're working on some specific things with you, which we should talk about in an upcoming episode as well. But yeah, um, yeah but you haven't, you like your work. It's yeah. satisfying to you. Yep. Um, and it doesn't require you to build a business right, right now. Yeah, you don't have to do that. Do you can do your work and engage with your colleagues fully because you are an engager, which is awesome. You've been making new friends and you're doing those things, but you're doing it at your pace and in your way. 
And I am tempted by my own guilt. This isn't guilt you're pointing at me by this sort of pro-social sort of guilt. It's this weird, like, no, no, no. You have to make sure everyone feels equally included. But equal is a weird word. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's fair. These are strange words in complicated relationships because you don't actually want the same life I want. We've run a business together. We have. And you didn't really enjoy running that business. You might want to again in the future, but you didn't enjoy it. Even when, even when during the good years, yeah. you, di- you just weren't finding it that satisfying. So why would I want to thrust that upon you? And while we both enjoy meeting new people, you're going to find dating, like you're going to come to your dating pattern on your own. So It's does, not going to look like mine. No, We're different it certainly people. would not. So does this feel to you like uh, a differentiation issue? It does feel like that. Like I'm forgetting there are, there are moments and they're not just moments. They're not just momentary, but like there are swaths of time where I feel like it should be my job to, um, to convince you to level up, which is weird. Cause it's not like I'm, I'm not above you, but like I should convince you to level up, to be doing what I'm doing. And I, I judge that myself. I have my, wow, that's dumb, Jolie. You, you do <laughs> have, have that, that face, that on. face I on. I see it. Um, I know that that is no, neither healthy nor part of our agreement. Um, so that's something to bring awareness to. It's like it's hanging out in the peripheries of mm-hmm. my awareness. Like it's way off to the edge. Like, oh, wait, remember that he has his own desires and wants and his own way of moving in the world. And that's supporting you in being more yourself is my goal. And I think that's, if I were to ask people to take one thing away when they're thinking about really being in an individual, an individuation relationship, a relationship that's oriented to prioritize growth growth over comfort, supporting your partner in being more and more themselves and that, and only they can define who that is. Yeah. So not your version of who they yeah, are. That has been a, an interesting puzzle. That's that's the key. Yeah. And it is a puzzle because one of the ways that I learned, like for instance, so I'm a fairly bright girl. I mm-hmm. I, I can I can do I can do work that requires my intelligence. You can. But I didn't see that about myself during most of my life. It was your belief that I was intelligent that allowed me to begin believing it. So there is a piece of this puzzle that's really tricky because what our partner sees in us can allow us to see something that's been in the shadow. Yeah. So this is what we call a golden shadow. There are parts of you that you repress and deny. You've cut them off from yourself because you were at some point you received a message that you either couldn't be or weren't this thing, you know, maybe it's intelligent or attractive or funny or, or caring. It doesn't matter what it was, but some quality that you, you really admire, but you can't see it in yourself because you, yeah, you were were encouraged to deny it somehow. And so by having your partner reflect it to you, like see that in you and you do, you see that in me. And, um, You've been seeing that directly in me for, honestly, longer than the 12 years we've been together, probably 20 years. Um, I have seen you reflect that to me in different ways. And that incrementally allowed me to claim it for myself. Once I claimed it for myself, the trick is then to stop requiring you to hold it up for me. This is my thing. Right. It's my thing, my quality, my... Well, you said that I was engaging. And that is my quality, but I didn't think so. I thought I was an isolationist. Right. Not a people person. And so now I have to figure out how to hold that up myself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Same. We, I mean, we've gone back and forth for around you being, are you an introvert? And you often have been not just thought you were an introvert, but been told people guess that you're an introvert. Yep. I've when decided, really you appear to be a very shy extrovert. I think, I think I'm a vert. <laughs> A vert. I'm just a vert. Ambivert. An ambivert. Everybody's an ambivert. Everybody's an ambivert. But you, but you actually really do thrive in connection to other people, in in yes, conversation. I do. 
but you were, you, you didn't, for whatever reason, you didn't want to believe that about yourself in earlier times. Yeah. Maybe so, it felt safer. But once you claimed it for yourself, yeah, I have seen you try to get me to hold that part of it <laughs> Yeah. So you started by saying that you want to encourage your partners to be their self. They're, yeah, they're, more, they're more, more and more of themselves without projecting onto them what you want them to be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not going to be easy. It's By the not, way, and this is like the, the work of a lifetime. This is masterwork in your relationship. Because yeah. what you just said is, but then there's also the things that you reflect back at them. Yeah. How do you distinguish the things that you actually see that you're reflecting back versus what you want to see I, and are trying to make them be? And there is no simple answer to that. I'm going to make a hard. really hard suggestion. Hmm. It's, it is. You're going to have to talk to them. <laughs> it is a good way of differentiating the the. So actually, better projections than just, don't from talk the reflections. at them. Here's the thing. Ask your partner open ended questions in an environment where they truly can believe that it's okay for them to answer in any way that yeah. feels right to them. And fostering that environment is, is its own work, its own set of skills and techniques. Our partners are mysterious to us, and that's part of what keeps them attractive over the years. While I am a big believer in developing a firm foundation and connection to you, allowing you to be different, not just different, like, <laughs> Di different from me, but different day to day, yeah. allowing you to grow and change. And sometimes those growth m moments happen and they are lightning bolts yeah. that feel like they will rattle the foundation of our relationship. But when those lightning bolts are also, <sighs> when they're pivotal to you becoming more you, yep. yeah, they might be painful, but that's part of what we signed on. It's part for. of what we signed on for. And I know I'm an optimist, but one of the things that happens when the foundation of your relationship gets rattled, you look at it. Yeah. And you find out whether it's still what you thought it was or if it needs to change or, you know, but, but you actually see what's there. And I think that's freaking awesome. I have no idea what's going to happen as a result of you having this relationship. Right. No, no clue. And that is exciting. And I do, I feel settled. Even though we have constant you. conversations. Yep. But you're it's... open to the mystery. Yeah. It's the, it's the knowing that you don't know. Mm -hmm. And that can feel really unsafe, especially if you happen to yes. struggle some with your attachment, it can feel unsafe. So ground yourself with your relationship rituals. That's what, so mm. what, one of the things we did this morning is we did, we did our rituals. We had our coffee, we worked out together. We had we made our rituals. the breakfast that we, we make the, the way we do we it. Yep. And, and that allowed us to to have that stability, yeah. even as there's a yep. bit of a rumbling earthquake going on. Yeah. So we we um, we use the connection points that we have okay. to make sure we stay connected. So I, I think there's three things. One, we're always helping each other to be more ourselves. Mm-hmm. Everyone listening, I know that this can be really, really hard to imagine, but take a look at where are you expecting your partner to be exactly the same? And is that actually holding you both back from being whatever's next, from allowing the mystery yeah. to actually work? Um, two, the creating a space where it's okay to share, yeah, groundbreaking information that's coming up, like where it's okay to change your mind and need to talk through confusing, complicated stuff. Yeah, I know that's not easy. One of the things I do is hold space for people when they're wrestling with, with that kind of movement in their and relationship. And you do that for me. You let me be inconsistent until I figure out what's going on. A and through all that rumbling and all the inconsistency, we use ritual, mm -hmm. intentional connection points. That's what I think of as ritual, intentional points of connection, which has been, we have the data. We know that ritual provides stronger and more um, joyful relationships. Um, we covered this in an earlier episode. Use your rituals, and if you don't have some, start building them. Start building them today. Use your rituals to ground you as you do this hard work of yeah. allowing for change. So what are those three things again? So, oh goodness, that's hard. Yeah, right? I mean, we'll go back and listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> the, but there was encouraging them to grow into themselves, yep. have, making a space 
to where it's safe. safe to work through these things yep. together and then the rituals right of main of the current connection yeah mm, good stuff it's always going to be a little trippy to yes. leap off the cliff into yep. the new stuff i am super glad to have you yeah. as a partner in that in that I've wild been amazed ride. at what we've been able to do. Thank you. And if anybody wants to reach out and has a follow-up question about this episode, we'd love to build on it. You can always email me at jolie at joliehamilton.com. Thanks for listening, Thanks everybody. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to the Project Relationship Podcast with Dr. Jolie Hamilton and Ken Hamilton. If you're enjoying our conversation, we would be so grateful if you would drop a rating and quick review so more people will be able to find us. And if you have questions or suggestions that you of things you'd like us to tackle, please send an email to jolie at joliehamilton.com. I'd love to hear them. Project Relationship, the Entrepreneur's Action Plan for Passionate, Sustainable Love is available on Amazon in Kindle, soft, or hardcover versions. This book is a succinct, practical guide to improving your love life. I wrote Project Relationship to give you a set of quick action tools and conversation guides that can transform a mediocre relationship into a fabulous one. These tools are based not just on what Jolie learned in her studies, but on what we actually do to make our relationship thrive. Until next time, remember, relationships can be messy, and that's good news. <laughs>